special guest on the channel who recently been to Russia despite the US warnings. He's an American. Why and why did you not uh, listen to your State Department's uh, you know, warnings. Why do I conceal my face? Why do I not show my face? Of course, number one, there's a lot of crazy people on the internet. Uh, of course, there's a lot of hostility towards any anyone connected to Russia, Russian, Russian language, showing anything in a remotely positive light. There's a great deal of hostility from people from uh, all around the world. And, and why did you not believe your State Department's warning about Russia? But I quickly went to uh, across a border that most people don't consider that exists. There's no embassies there. So they're like, there's no embassy supports. You know, it's a, to be honest with you, I had a little bit of fears. You know, hold on here. These these travel warnings and things, they're not the whole story. In yeah. fact, I think a lot of these travel warnings are, are developed on a geopolitical kind of uh, incentive. This is my enemy, so I'm going to say, don't go there, don't travel there. I mean, I'm from the United States originally. First time that I ever crossed the... Uh, Russian border into the Russian Federation. The way that the media kind of gets to you, you know, they really do kind of put a little a, a little stress on your skin a little bit, you know? Going up to the border to check, and I didn't know. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I'm an Irish citizen and I'm a US citizen. So I travel on an Irish passport. People are like, oh, you went to Russia. Did they not, did they not pull you in an interrogation chamber and extract a bunch of information out of you? Or these people were welcoming me with open arms despite everything that's going on in the world. Like humanity went to outer space and the first language spoken in outer space was Russian. It was, it was from the Soviet space program. It, Russia is the friendliest country I have ever visited. Ruskaya Dusha. I'm sure you're being paid by Kremlin. <laughs> I'm just sure. Yep. This evil in Russia. And this here is a new special edition of the live streams. Uh, live stream, I don't know, series maybe on this channel. I'm a foreigner that travels to Russia, films Russia, gives guidance to people all, all around the world who wants to travel Russia. So welcome everybody to the stream. We're going to have a special guest on the channel who recently been to Russia despite the U.S. warnings. He's an American traveler, lives in Ireland. We're going to hear more of his story. Join everybody. Make sure to click the like button, subscribe. And of course, if you want to support my journeys and travels, please use Super Chat or links in the description like PayPal and buy me coffee. Without further ado, let's bring up our uh, guest. There he is. Borscht Bandits, uh, straight from USA and currently maybe in Ireland. We're going to hear more about you. Welcome to the Igor in Russia show. Thank you, Igor. I'm happy to be here. Um, yeah, thank you for having me on. <laughs> Let's get straight to it. So back yeah. again, Borscht Bandit, an American traveled to Russia and uh, post-Soviet countries. And we're going to know why and why did you not uh, listen to your State Department's uh, you know, warnings. But why did you study Russian language? Yep. So that was the first thing I think that you need to really consider when you're learning a language. First off, is anyone actually going to speak this language back to me? I'll give you a quick example. Maybe about six years ago or so, the first country I visited after moving to Ireland was Netherlands. And I did a bit of studying of Dutch on Duolingo. And I went to Netherlands and no one wanted to speak Dutch to me, you know. So it's kind of like, why did I even do this? Right. Whereas Russia, Russia, not only Russia, but all the countries for the most part, uh, with varying degrees, some more than others, have huge Russian speaking populations and they don't speak English or I mean so many people of course speak some English or some people speak really good English but a lot of people you know they, 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 they don't they don't speak English they might learn Mandarin or they might speak other languages maybe they only speak Russian so in order to have like a good conversation in order to actually really learn the people and learn a country explore things authentically you want to have that connection and you want to actually be able to speak to people going around somewhere that you can't understand people you know, I've, I've experienced this in Poland or even Czech Republic. It's not the same as when you can just strike up a conversation with someone and, and sure. communicate basic thoughts even, you know. So my goal is to constantly improve my Russian skills, my Russian abilities, so I can have deeper and deeper conversations and drive deeper stories and narratives for my audience and uh, for myself, of course, as well. And you're exactly correct. And uh, in Russia, people do not speak English as much as you would think, comparing it to maybe European level. Uh, you can find uh, decent speaking English, English speaking people, uh, maybe in big cities or some, you know, uh, some certain people, but uh, that's yeah. more like a rarity, I would say. So, and, uh, but you know, there's one thing also you don't need to, uh, it's a key to uh, people's soul, and Russian soul is the language for sure. As you yeah. probably have come across, just a little bit striking few words, and then it goes off. People are happy, more smiling to you as well. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can manage in being in Russia even without 
single words. Somehow things work out in Russia for travelers that do not speak yeah. Russian, but somehow things just work out. And that's the one of the beauties about specialties about Russia in general. So one thing, of course, uh, that uh, my, my, many might be asking right now is that, uh, is there some kind of a fear uh, about you being exposed, you know, your face being exposed to, to the media and, and having this re Russia relation, so to speak? Or why do you cover your face? Yeah, I'm sure that's the first thing y'all are wondering when I come on the camera and I, I'm re I dressed like I'm ready to rob a train in a Wild Western movie, you know. Uh, of course, my uh, my logo, uh, the Borscht Bandit, you know, the Bandit, is, and of course, is where it comes from. But um, why do I conceal my face? Why do I not show my face? Of course, number one, there's a lot of crazy people on the Internet. Um, there's a lot of hostile people on the Internet uh, to content creators in general. I mean, like we're just even normal content. OK, and you start engaging and interfacing with uh, uh, Russia, which is very tragically, and unfortunately, these days, I completely disagree with it. But nowadays, uh, of course, there's a lot of hostility towards anyone connected to Russia, any anyone connected to Russia, Russian, Russian language, showing anything in a remotely positive light. There's a great deal of hostility from people from a, all around the world. Uh, of course, there's a lot of great support and there's a lot of great people that I'm very thankful for for have followers who follow me from all over the world as well. But I think ultimately the best thing I can do for uh, my content is to ensure my, is, is to ensure my safety, uh, but also, you know, to, uh, use a bit of common sense and uh, you know yeah I, I think I, I think I think it adds a little bit more uh, uh, security to my work but also side bonuses helped me really focus on delivering a bird's eye point of view perspective to my viewers you know when I was when I was first learning Russian I didn't have the money to travel I didn't have the access and everything like that and my what I hope to do through my content is is, is deliver you know, maybe maybe you're in that point in life right now. You, you aren't able to make these trips. Maybe you can't see these places. And I'd like to maybe give you a little bit of a living vicariously in a sense. That you, you're to, to, well, I want you to feel like you're there with me. I want you to feel like you're also a Borscht Bandit, you know, so. So what made you actually go to Russia the first time? How many times you've been to Russia or Russia-related places which are not necessarily Russia? And, and why did you not believe your State Department's warning about Russia, because it says do not travel to Russia at any means. Yeah, that's right, 100%. And my journey actually didn't start in Russia. Uh, my, my travel journey started in uh, Moldova, of course, uh, was actually, actually the first country that I visited with the Russian-speaking population. But I quickly went to uh, across a border that most people don't consider that exists, called the Prenestrovia, and the Prenestrovia, Maybe many of the people in the audience are familiar with Tiraspol. Uh, Transnistria uh, in English. Transnistria in English. Transnistria. That's right. That's right. Uh, 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 but yeah, so of course the locals call it Prenestrovia in English, Romania, Transnistria. But that was where I started. So without, basically I, I, at the time, I didn't know much about visas. I didn't know about the e-visa program. I didn't know how to get into Russia or something like that. So I thought, the easiest place to go would be to Tiraspol. You don't need any visas. Uh, you can go into, yeah, as long as you can get to Moldova, you're able to get there. It's a completely Russian-speaking country. Uh, everyone there speaks Russian. All the signs are in Russian. The grocery store is in Russian. And I started in Tiraspol. I studied uh, Russian language there for a week. I bought uh, language courses. I stayed in a local apartment. Uh, it was an incredible experience. And that's where I filmed my very, very, very first attempts at content creation there on my TikTok channel. Now, Tiraspol and Prenestrovia is also a country just like Russia that is like they, the, the, the governments will tell you, don't go there. You're going to get arrested. You're going to get kidnapped. You're going to be you're going to be murdered. Then we'll never see you again. There's no and, 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 and unlike Russia, there's no embassies there. So they're like there's no embassy supports. You know, it's a it's a pirate government and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. But what I found when I traveled there and, and I will be honest, with you, I had a little bit of fears. I, I, I took a chance. I took a gamble, I guess, from my perspective. But when I got there, what I learned was that the, the people of Tiraspol were incredibly friendly, incredibly, incredibly friendly, incredibly supportive, incredibly supportive, encouraging, encouraging me in my Russian. They knew, of course, I, I didn't, you know, I was just in the beginning days of my Russian language. I'd only done Duolingo for 365 days. And that was the first time I learned that, you know, hold on here, these, these travel warnings and things. They're not the whole story. In yeah. fact, I think a lot of these travel warnings are, are developed on a geopolitical kind of uh, incentive. You know, this is my enemy. So I'm going to say, don't go there, don't travel there and stuff like that. You know, I mean, I'm from the United States originally. There's countries out there that have travel warnings against the United States. So that's what you got to kind of consider. Um, 
and leave them, I, leave them, uh, leave them uh, at a certain, you know, um, um, special corner for them. But uh, by the way, and when was the first time that you um, went to Russia? Then because now this you started off, yes. off with the Pridnestrovia, Moldova. And mm -hmm. when was the first uh, Russian trip? I know you contacted yes. me because you had a little bit uh, uncertain, uh, you know, a lot of stereotypes, um, prejudices, and uh, based on truth or just you know rumors. But yeah. when that happened, yeah. So that was that was I would have said say February of this year was the first time that I ever crossed the uh, Russian border into the Russian Federation uh, officially. Um, and like you said, I even after going to Prenestrovia and stuff. The way that the media kind of gets to you, you know, they really do kind of put a little a, a little stress on your skin a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just natural because you don't know. It's the unknown and everything like that. I don't know, you know, I, I, I didn't know what to expect. Like you said, I got in contact with you because initially at my plan, I was just going to be in a Narva. And I wanted to just go to Ivan Gorod for the day. And there wasn't a lot of information on that with the border security zone and everything like that. So that's when I reached out to Igor. And by the way, everyone, Igor is incredibly fr helpful and been really supportive of uh, Helping me get to Russia, so a big thank you to you, Spasibo Bolshoi, Igor, for that. Um, but yeah, I I remember walking up to that bridge, up to you know Narva uh, that divides Narva and Ivan Gorod, going up to the border check, and I didn't know, I didn't know what was going to happen. I knew Prydnestrovia wants like a lot of tourism, but I didn't know what what Russia was going to do because of course, I travel on an Irish passport. I'm an Irish citizen and I'm a U.S. citizen, so I travel on an Irish passport most of the time. But it does say that I was born in the United States. And when you when you travel to Russia with the E visa program, you have to declare, do you have any other citizenships? And of course I did. Um, so I, I didn't know. You know, I, people are like, oh, you went to Russia. Did they not did they not pull you in an interrogation chamber and you know extract a bunch of information out of you or whatever? You know, no, no nothing at all. It was the most professional, friendly, welcoming border crossing experience I've had in years. And it was and and, and I remember I, 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 it was such a huge impact. By the time I actually got over to the other side, and uh, kick, by the time I was going to Kingisep, which is on my YouTube channel, my trip to Kingisep. By the time I got to Kingisep, I was in awe. I was like, "Oh my gosh, these people were welcoming me with open arms, despite everything that's going on in the world." Like they they they, they welcomed me, and 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 of yep. course that, that that welcome and that hospitality didn't stop for the duration of my visit. So that was the first time I've been to Russian Federation. And uh, so you basically yeah. took a little step, like uh, your with your uh, with your toe. You stepped a little bit to Russia. You didn't go far enough. Yeah, far enough. You, you didn't go further yet. But you, King is up is 20 kilometers from Ivan Gorod. Ivan Gorod, you can see already, actually, Russia starts right after the border in a good and in, in a bad way or in a, you know, a romantic way, how you want to. It, it starts right there, right? So you can see the difference, you know, the atmospheres and stuff. Me, personally, I usually experience it as a smile because I start to smile as soon as I'm in Russia, whether it's bad weather, good weather or whatever, or or, or stressful day. But uh, you went to King Kisab, that's 20 kilometers. I also visited for the first time, like, uh, this winter. And it's a nice little, like, Soviet uh, a, a city. But mm -hmm. uh, you must... So w since you had such a great experience, it's two hours more and you're in the, one of the greatest cities in the world, St. Petersburg, really uh, waiting to get to uh, hear your experience when you decide to go to St. Petersburg and Moscow, because I know, and that's the next part, uh, you have a like huge fascination to, you know, through the language to Russian culture, history, or especially maybe Soviet history. Uh, you have this fascination. It's like I know what you probably feel. It's like a time travel thing. You know, um, you know, finding something I don't know forbidden or like lost type of thing. You know, I feel like me personally when I find these stuff, I'm not a huge like Soviet buff in that way because I was born in the Soviet Union. For me, it's like nostalgia. For you, it might be even more like mysterious type of thing. But mm -hmm. um, you're gonna you're gonna go crazy when you see like the capital of the Soviet Union and well, capital of Russia uh, now. So it's gonna be like, man, you're gonna I don't know. Yeah, you're, you're gonna have hard time, you know, con uh, const constraining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, you know, um, I think the Soviet Union should be interesting to anybody in the world, uh, of course, because. Soviet Union put the first man into space, first human being into space. Humanity went to outer space, and the first language spoken in outer space was Russian. It was, it was from the Soviet space program. The uh, Soviets uh, pioneered a lot of different things. Um, no matter what your, your thoughts are on different things, there's, there's, there's a lot of things to learn from the Soviet Union. Uh, I mean, uh, when, when, 
here in Western Europe or over in the United States, you know, you've got a lot of cities. People are, are having a hard time affording their rent. There's a housing crisis. There's a housing shortage. You know, that's one thing that looked to the Soviet Union, for example, was massive housing programs that were developed in the 60s. A lot of people might say Khrushchevkas, uh, Brezhnevkas and stuff are ugly. But at the same time, I've stayed in so many of these in my travels and they're, and they're, they're, and they're, they're, they're decent housing, you know, especially if they've been well maintained and stuff like that. They're things that people would love to pay, pay good money to stay in, in, in in these Western cities. You know, there's a lot of things to learn. Uh, of course, I'm from a country that went through uh, various, various uh, eras and stages of Red Scare purges. People were pulled into prison and interrogation and stuff for their connections or links to any sort of um, any sort of a Soviet type of thing. Uh, I, I definitely wouldn't have, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing today back then for sure. Um, and and there, there does create a lot of mystery from that, you know. So it's it's interesting to actually go and, and go there, but also talk to the older people. Now that I'm learning a bit of Russian, I can have conversations. I can hear their stories. Not even not even not even, even political stories. Just, just generic stories. What was it like? You know, well, how especially cold... people don't want to talk political, so that's the only way. <laughs> of course, well... but there's still so much to learn. And and the house of cultures, for example, how people uh, celebrated their 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 dance and their theatrics in the middle towns, or you know, how do they eat? You know, what was the what was the grocery stores like? You know, what was the what was the education like? You know, all, all kinds of different things you can find out. So, you what's uh, what's your first impression of uh, Russia uh, comparing it to America or Ireland where you live now? So, what's the uh, like five points uh, five points you want to bring up, positive yep. or negative? First point is Russia is the friendliest country I've ever visited. You know, it, Russia is the friendliest country I have ever visited. People will go out of their way to help you. They will, they will, they will help you, and and they will turn down any sort of reciprocal, um, you know, exchange. They they'll be like, no, 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 no. Welcome to Russia. What, you, I'm, we're happy you're here. You know, and then I'm just talking regular people on the street. Regular people on the street is the fr- people are like. What do you mean? It, it, Russia's the friendliest country you've ever been? Yeah, absolutely. I've been, I've been to go to many countries now, thank God. But hundred percent friendliest. Second point, I would say uh, safety. It is extremely a safe country. And I've never been to uh, St. Petersburg, like you said. I've never been to Moscow. So I'm not one of these kind of people that's like sitting there, um, you know, like uh, not not going out to the little towns. That's the only place I've been is the little towns. And it's extremely safe, clean. Um, one thing I would say also is a lot of Russians are very, very cultured and very, very educated people. They're very, they're like, I don't care who you are. You know, if you just talk to the random guy in the bar, he's got a probably a wide range and scopes of interests and topics that he's uh he's uh, talked about or he's, he's learned and educated himself on mm-hmm. incredibly cultured people it's great great conversations uh i'm trying to think oh yeah the food i love the food maybe it's not everyone's cup of tea my name is borscht bandit of course i love uh borscht you know borscht is of course not just russian but it's 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 one of the main main things you know palmini vareniki you know solovayas i love that food um you know, a ka- kashas and things, you know. Also, yeah, Gretzky. I love all these different types of foods. Um, trying to think of a negative. Maybe the only, they may be the only negative, and I haven't experienced it too much. Of course, it's just the cold, you know. Like, I, I, I'm not a big uh, cold mm. guy. But that being said, I still want to see the cold. I still want to experience it. Murmansk is always one of the hero cities of the Soviet Union, and Murmansk is very high up on my list. I want to go there, even though I know. Which one? Murmansk. 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 Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I have it also uh, somewhere from St. Petersburg upwards, the uh, Petro, Petro, uh, Petro, Petro, Petrozavodsk. Very good. It's a, it's a big city as well. So Very in good. Russia, big city means, well, a minimum 500,000 maybe. <laughs> 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 All yeah. right. So these are the t- uh, one. Yeah. And these are t- very similar things that people usually say, by the way. And usually, like the safety is one of the biggest, uh, you know, because it's exactly the opposite what the media uh, <laughs> tries to say, uh, portray, and also the uh, unfriendliness, like uh, trying to portray Russians as evil people, like personally on a personal level, which is totally BS. So uh, the people I've talked about, the Americans, who are the expats, uh, they always say the same thing when I ask them about top three things. These are usually the ones. And uh, and these this is a good list, and it can conti- it can continue. Of course, there's so much history also that you can find. Did you get any uh, you know um, 
kind of uh, any attacks of being so uh, you know friendly to the Russian history, Russian culture, and yep. uh, like physically or online yet. Yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, in, in fact, unfortunately, uh, I and I regret to say that, yeah, of course I did. Um, and, I, and that really caught me off guard. That was the first time I was creating content and I got a large, yes, I, I, some very aggressive hatred, let's say. And now that being said, one fifth of my TikTok followers are Estonians. And I, I really enjoyed Estonia. I, I, I'm definitely going back to Estonia. I enjoy Estonia as a country, uh, and I've studied a tiny bit of Estonian, and I've tried to do all my best I can to show Estonian uh, culture and Estonian things in, in various TikToks I had uh, and, and my videos. I, I still have some talent, Tallinn content that I will eventually edit and put up online on YouTube. So, you know, Estonia as a country, I, I have great respect for and everything like that. And I, and I don't think that necessarily, I, I don't know what percentage of the country this is reflective of, but there was a good number of people from, from a section of society there, there in Estonia uh, that, that, that was not like the other followers of my, mine from Estonia. They, they, they were extremely angry that I was speaking to these Russian uh, speakers who were born and raised in Estonia. They were extremely unhappy and extremely upset, maybe, maybe even threatened. I don't know. And I, I never set out to maybe really jostle any, any I, never, no, I didn't set out to cause any problems or anything like that, but simply going and speaking to these people and showing the place. Yeah. They did not want that. They didn't, they didn't want that. And I, I did get threats online. Uh, so. I kind of, uh, you know, enjoy knowing that these, these uh, individuals are feeling so much anger or probably melting from inside because of, you know, I've seen your videos and basically you talking to somebody like some babushkas or some locals who speak, uh, would love to speak to a foreigner in Russian. That's the first thing probably that they're so mad about. Secondly, they speak about their Estonia as it's as theirs as the as as the other ones you know it's everybody's Estonia who lives there but they're pissed off because they think that's probably that land belongs only to real Estonians who speaks Estonians and uh, you know dressing in white black and blue <laughs> so uh, I, I guess it makes me only happy to know these people are melting like uh, like the witch from the Wizard of Oz yep I mean but, it, it, it's, it's fortunate yeah, it's unfortunate, I know, but uh, it, you had a. It, so it was only online. You did not receive this kind of a uh, uh, treatment in Estonia or a uh, Russian Estonia, as I like to say, because it's a Russian majority there. So you did not absolutely. get any violence, physical, right? Yet. No, well, yeah, no, absolutely hopefully not. never. No, no, um, they're not even close. Uh, in fact, I would have never even known it existed if I wasn't making content. And I'll give you a couple of uh, quick examples, like uh, even in Tallinn, the capital city. You know, um, there was many uh, for for a country that has said that, you know, the younger people are, n are not learning Russian anymore or they're, they're learning English or trying to ex kind of replace Russian with English. So they're, they're their own choice and stuff. But I, I didn't find as many people who spoke English in, in Tallinn that I expected. I would start in Estonian when I was in Tallinn. I would start in Estonian. Do you, do you speak uh, English? And um, there, were, there was a surprising low amount of people. And so a Russian actually got me a lot farther in Tallinn than I expected. Uh, you know, and you wouldn't know that from speaking online. But it was good that I knew some Russian, of course, because my Estonian isn't isn't very good um but yeah of course no and everyone everyone i met in person was friendly and uh, nice to me in estonia so yeah and if there's no this uh anti-russian theme I actually i also really like the estonia it has so much interesting locations and the and estonians are like estonian estonians are very nice as well as long as there's no this uh you know, politicized or, uh, you know, hatred. If that's out of the picture, it's like, I really, I really enjoy Estonia as well. And I actually uh, really like, well, there's few cities that you must visit probably is Tartu, Perno, and uh, I really like Narva, even though it's like a 100% Soviet building. Uh, you know, my quick tips on learning Russian is if you've never learned Russian before, just start on Duolingo. I know that's, I know that Duolingo has a lot of complaints and, and rightly so, but 10 to 15 minutes a day. I did that for 365 days before I ever went to Moldova. And it was a it was a good foundation. You know, I, I would consider myself a casual learner. I don't sit there with large stacks of flashcards and textbooks. Um, you know, I did 10, 15 minutes a day. My goal, my th th thing is just just do a little bit of Russian every day. A little bit of Russian every day. And then once you once you kind of prove on yourself, go get go get a teacher online or something yeah, and, like that. Maybe once a week. And Alex says with 255 million speakers, Russian is one of the most spoken languages in the world. And yes, and it can get you really far in uh you know, in some uh, surprising places, not just Russia and not just East uh, East uh, Europe. I know, I know, it has helped me as well. So, how's life about? Have you what you have noticed so far in uh, in in Russia? 
how life is different for from what you have uh, get used to from yeah, like in great. Ireland, for example, or states. That's a great question, um, and and you kind of touched on it earlier in the in the uh, in the interview. Ruskaya dusha, you know, Russian, Russian soul. soul. That was something that I learned about while I was in. That's right. That was something I learned about there while I was in Kaliningrad, and of course I'm still learning about ah, it. You, did, you did not mention you have been to Kaliningrad as well, that's right. and that's, that's recent right. trip. So after King Yusef, I went to Kaliningrad Oblast for a week, had a great time. Uh, I went to various different towns as well, like Zelenogradsk, and uh, I met some people uh, in, uh, in, a, in one of the bars. We were talking and stuff, and that's where I learned about Ruskaya Dusha for the first time, and I'm still learning about it, and, I, and maybe I'll probably be learning about it for the rest of my life. But this concept of a Russian soul seems to be a very, very big thing, very important thing. I would encourage everyone to maybe look it up and try to learn about it. Um, it's very fascinating stuff. If I felt any bit of that Russian soul, I can tell you this: it's just, it's just, it, it, there's, there's. I feel like there's a certain level of trust between people, you know, between people and 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 Russia. They're very trusting people for for the most part, which is a good thing. Of course, they're you know they're not going to take your, your your crap if you. You know, I'd imagine, but like they're, they're they're very trusting, very kind, and very courteous and respectful people, and they don't hold grudges. You know, so like you know, for instance, I'm I'm I grew up in America, right? They don't hold that against me. They're never gonna they're not gonna throw that in my face or try to make a big deal of things. Whereas, you know, maybe in other countries they do do that. They do have that kind of um, uh, xenophobic kind of intolerance for other nationalities. Yep. But that would be one thing I, I would say. That's first thing I have to think of. Uh, what about like uh, you know how's the buildings, how's the city, city's conditions? For example, now it's fifty thousand people living, fifty-five thousand living in uh, King Giuseppe and Kaliningrad. I think it's half a million, right? Yes, it's all, yeah. it's around half a million. So how's like uh, housing and uh, you know infrastructure? Yeah. So uh, right now the Services. only uh, Kal right now the only Kaliningrad video that I have on my YouTube channel is an overview of the historical battle from the great patriotic war world war ii but two videos coming up one is the soviet uh, heritage of uh kaliningrad and the other is the german heritage of uh, kaliningrad and a lot of people think this is a myth but a lot of people think that all the german buildings from the old city of Königsberg were, were destroyed that that there's no german like kind of remnants at all in the city or whatever like that and don't get me wrong kaliningrad is a is a, a very important part of russia it's an integral part of the russian federation don't get me wrong on that but as you know, if you visited Kaliningrad, they, they do, I think, like to uh, 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 experiment with the, the German heritage of the city, maybe for tourism, maybe just for local interest or something. But there's a lot of there's a lot more German buildings there than you might expect. And you will see those in my videos. Um, all in all, though, the best thing about Kaliningrad is all of the new buildings. You can when I was in Kaliningrad, I could tell that the economy was booming. At least it felt that way. The new construction all over the place. Zelenogradsk, of course, was like a first first rate beach resort town. I want to go back there next summer for the beach. That is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful beach town. New resorts going up, new new houses. What's well, the most important thing? New housing and apartments, brand new sky rises for people for people to live in. Place was yeah, construction was booming in, in Kaliningrad. So that's all I can say. People have this mentality. Oh, it's a, it's, it's this uh, I don't know gritty little Soviet. You know, it's 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 a beautiful beautiful city. Uh, all right, so Kaliningrad uh, and uh, Zelenograd, that's the beach resort. Zelenogradsk, what's the word? Because Zelenograd, there's next to St. Petersburg, there is Zelenogorsk. So this is Zelenograd, yeah. right? I've been there. Zel Zelenogradsk. Zelenogradsk, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, right next to the town you were talking about there. Um, Zelenogradsk specifically, uh, it was the for old German names was, was Kranz back in the East Prussian days. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's my uh, washing machine there, if you hear that in the background. Um, but... It's the it's the capital city of cats. So do you like cats? You know, if you like cats, Zelenogradsk is the city for you. There's cats all over the town, but they're well looked after. They're well, well cared for. There's vending machines that sell cat food for, and all the tourists uh, are feeding the, the cats. The cats food are very very. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This, the, is, this is utopia for cats, basically. And I love, and every many people love on my channel. Of course, I love uh, stray cats. Feeding stray cats, helping them out majorly, but you probably mean that like capital city of Russia for cats because it's Istanbul is on a whole different level for about when we talk about that. <laughs> but for Russia, that is very. I know it's. I have to come with a new perspective next time. I was in 2019 before I was uh, 
into into uh, beautiful cats. I'm sure you're being paid by Kremlin. I'm just sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I have I have no family connections to Russia. I have no none of that. No one no yeah. one's pulling me to Russia, but my own two feet. <laughs> That's the most common thing people would say. All right. Hey, what about uh, you travel to Kaliningrad? People might be wondering uh, if they, they plan to uh, enter Russia to uh, via Kaliningrad. How was the trip there shortly? What, how, what's the process? Yeah. So it's very quick and simple, but there's one important caveat. Okay. And keep in mind, I am I'm, I'm born and raised in America, but I have Irish citizenship. Okay. So you need to make sure that you have EU citizenship or a permanent residency within the EU. Because when you going to Kaliningrad is no problem, but when you're coming back into Poland, Poland typically won't let you back into Poland unless you're, yeah, you're an EU citizen, and they have to basically, you know. Uh, so, for example, if you just have a U.S. passport, or you just have a British passport, or something like that, um, I think they may do make exceptions sometimes, but oftentimes they they won't let you back in, and you have to. Uh, from what I've heard, I don't have any firsthand experience in this, but from what I've heard, you'd have to go through leave through the uh, Lithuanian border. To get out, um, or maybe I guess fly to another part of Russia, and, you know. But the cheapest way I think is leaving through Lithuania. Now, how much, how much was the ticket through Poland? I would travel through Lithuania; it would be easy. And I hear, hear it's faster. But uh, how how long was your trip, and how much was it? So, there's a great YouTube video on my channel if you're interested in that. Uh, it was less than 200 pounds British pounds sterling, and uh, I, I I I take you along with the bus uh, the bus ride. And on the bus ride, I, I walk you through all the expenses, the receipts and everything. Now, that, that's including my flight from Belfast to Gdansk. That's including my uh, accommodation for a week with my own room. That's including uh, the bus ticket from Gdansk into Kaliningrad and back. The only thing I didn't account for was meals, which, as you know, um, in Russia, you can, you can get, of course, a wide range of prices. But you can eat well for two pounds sterling a, a meal. Two or three pounds, you're you're eating really well in Russia. So I didn't include that cost, but yeah, for a week trip, because because we have a good uh, immigrant immigrant population here from Poland. There's there's a lot, oftentimes very cheap routes from from Ireland, or even over in Britain to Poland. So that's how I, I ended up uh, getting such a cheap trip. So would you travel actually to? Uh, I have you wondered if, if Kaliningrad is easiest? I don't know if it's easier than Narva for you, Ivan Gorod. But uh, would you travel through Kaliningrad to Saint Petersburg by plane? First Kaliningrad, then plane, which is like fifty. You can get for fifty bucks uh, a ticket to Saint Petersburg. Then you can visit me, and then we're gonna have some beer. But uh, uh, would have you considered that as an option? I have considered that as an option, uh, and that's the next. That's my next uh, thing. So I, I've, I've been going through uh, various different um, Warsaw Pact countries recently. My next stop is Russia after this, because I got to get back to Russia. I'm probably like yourself. I, I, I loved. I, I got to plan my next Russian trip, and my next plan is to go to Saint Petersburg and Moscow. The exact route, I'll have to double check. Um, Narva was what I was originally thinking, but then of course what I've heard now is the border, the lines at the border, or something. It seems to be a little bit different than last time I was there earlier in the year. Yeah, it's got you worse. Know, yeah, that's that 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 is geographically closer though, so that's probably what I think of. But I, again, like you said, you can get flights from Kaliningrad. I have a, um, another good uh, content creator uh, contact named Stacy in Russia. She actually did travel to um, Moscow f- through Gdansk to Kaliningrad, Kaliningrad to uh, Moscow. So yeah, I'm I'm. I'm that th- those are the two routes I think I, w- I would look into the most, you know, from where I am at least, you know. Otherwise, you got to go through what Turkey and Serbia and stuff. So yeah, and uh, there's a couple other ways if you don't want to be in in lines. And plus, I think it's just recently starting first of uh, uh, September. First of September, it might be getting a little bit easier f- for what I've seen in the groups because you know uh, school started, so there's a little bit less people traveling. It might maybe get better. Uh, a little bit from the worst situation like that it, it, that it has been recently. Plan, uh, planning to travel to St. Petersburg from Turkey. What do I do about my phone? I need to buy a new SIM card once I get to the airport to have access. Yes. And uh, the question, the answer is yes, you need to buy a SIM card, but you can get like basically like 40 gigabytes, 50 gigabytes, unlimited internet basically for around four or five bucks. So you can get it easily with your passport. And paying the uh, you know paying the five hundred rubles around and uh, once yeah that's about it and the airport is very it's easier than even for us 
that travel, well, for, for example, for you, Borsh, traveling to Ivangorod, because uh, airports, uh, Polkova is the international airport, there's every service on the airport. You can get it right away, it works right away, it's cheap, and uh, it's good internet. When you travel to St. Petersburg and Moscow, and if you plan to see some of the, you know, I suggest no. for many travels who travel at least for a longer time or a few times, plan to travel a few times to Russia or endlessly, uh, they should get a Russian bank card. It's gonna get your life so so much easier and more out of it. And th and that's which and for um, getting that um, bank card, you must have a Russian SIM card with a Russian number, so you can actually uh, like uh, start to use the bank card. So this is why you should maybe get the uh, traditional SIM card as well. Because for example, I have the same SIM card for five four years. I just you know I have an um, online. And when I'm going to travel to Russia, I just transfer from my Russian bank the amount that I need to pay for the next month. And if there's no money, it just freezes and it waits for me to start the using my. So it's like really nice system. There's no, you know, nobody is expecting you to pay while you're not in Russia. Uh, all right. So what's up for the future? We are a little, wrapping up, wrapping up a little bit, but uh, what's yeah. up for the future? Are you planning to? Travel more Russia? Do you yeah, plan so, to move uh, to Russia in some point if it gets too wild for you here in the West or what? <laughs> well, I don't, I, I don't think I have any immediate plans to move to Russia. As much as I love Russia, you know, um, I'm, 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 like you said, so, so, so stuff starts to get crazy or something that, you know. Um, but I have a TikTok channel. I started on TikTok. Uh, and, of course, I work full time. So editing has been my biggest, my biggest uh, hurdle. And I'm, I've got a lot of stuff to edit through, and but I've, been, I've been really launched here into YouTube. I'm really prioritizing YouTube now because TikTok's changed quite a bit. I, I'll, I'll give you a rundown. Kaliningrad, I've got about three to four uh, full-time vlogs coming out on that. But after that, we've got the Polish People's Republic exploring the remnants of that. We've got exploring the uh, remnants of Czechoslovakia. And I'm not talking about just going to Prague. I mean, I'm talking about getting out into the small towns and everything like that. And there is a bit of Russian speaking there. Like I said, you'd be surprised where you, you can end up speaking Russian, but you know, so we got those vlogs coming out. And then right after that, like I said, we're going to kind of end out the year uh, strong on, on these vlogs. Get, make sure get get all of the, uh, the content pushed out. And then we're starting fresh, new equipment, better audio, better everything. Going to Moscow, St. Petersburg to start a journey across Russia. Our goal, our goal on Borscht Bandit is to go to every single former Soviet Republic. But we'd also like to go to all the major cities of Russia and all the hero cities of the Soviet Union, Union as well. Uh, you know, so I think in the second year, you're going to see Moscow, St. Petersburg, uh, Murmansk. Um, you know, I, I, I'd like to get to Vladivostok, but we'll, we'll see. How That's that my dream as well. I'm also looking into it. And I'm also looking into uh, Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan as well, I believe, would, would be coming up in the next year. So, so maybe we should join in some, some, some expeditions together uh, if, it, if the time suits. Absolutely. But you must wear the, this uh, disguise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they'll let me on the train if I'm dressed like this. <laughs> but that's the only way to travel the train. By the way, trains in Russia are super easy, super, not necessarily super fast, but uh, the cheapest way to travel for sure. It's nice to have you here. We, we, this is the first time we meet, so to speak. But uh, it's really nice talking to you guys. Subscribe to Borsh Bandit link in the uh, title of the video. If you're new to my channel, uh, I'm also a foreign and traveling uh, Russia, and uh, subscribe to my channel as well. Please push like. Uh, well, I'll take the time to say uh, thank you so much for having me on, Igor. Spasiba Bolshoi, ya blagada yuvas. Um, thank you so much for, for having me here. So. We're going to do it in Russian some part, sometime. All right. Thank you. Bye, bye, Take bye. care. Bye-bye, y'all.